Prophet David Taylor waiting on my Periscope audience. There you are. Hello, Periscope. <clears throat> Coming to you today at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time because I was at a convention earlier. So hopefully you caught that video so you would understand I'd be on later today. So as always, I always pray before I come out here and ask the Lord what he wants me to release to the body of Christ. And the word for today is change. Okay? Show you what the Lord gave me to say. We're going to read a very familiar passage, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 9. And no, it's not Ecclesiastics. So stop saying that. It's not the book of Ecclesiastics. Stop saying that. It's Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Uh, 1 through 8, excuse me. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. So first of all, don't ever let anybody tell you that it's the same season all the time. We just read in the scripture where King Solomon tells us that there's a time to everything. There's a season and a time to every purpose. I remember a few years back whenever I would listen to uh, certain religious teachings and whenever I would listen to certain religious leaders, they would always say, God says it's harvest time. And after a while, I stopped saying to myself, I started saying to myself, wait now, it can't be harvest time all the time. There's winter, spring, summer, and fall. Okay? It can't be harvest season every season. And they kept getting up talking about God said it's harvest time. I'm like, is that really what God's saying? So, right there in the scripture, you have to understand all these people that try to say life just goes one way, that things are always going to be the same way that there's only one right response to certain things? That's not what the scripture says. That's just what people say. What the scripture says is that to everything, there's a season. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. To everything, there's a season. And a time to every purpose, every purpose under the heaven. So what the Lord was showing me that I need to share with the body of Christ is that this is a time for change, okay, but not in the way you think. Uh, as I related in my video at the end of 2014, God called for the end of religion at the end of 2014. God called for us to come out of all of our religious practices and all of our liturgy and all of our orders of service and all of our commitment to the way we've always done things and all of our religious structures. God called us out of that at the end of 2014. Well, what was God calling us into? God was calling us into allowing each member of the body of Christ to snap into place. Now, let me be a little bit more specific. Every kindred tongue, people, and nation that God created has a very particular spot on the body of Christ. Let me say that again. Every kindred tongue, people, and nation that God has created has a particular spot on God's body. And that's why there tends to be certain giftings in that group. For example, the Bible teaches that uh, Hebrews, Jewish people, are the mouth. For the, unto them were given the oracles of God. The oracles of God were committed to the Hebrews. They're the mouth. Do you want to know what Africans and African Americans are? If you look up uh, Ethiopia, if you look up Kush and Kushai in particular, do you want to know what we are? We are the eyes. That's right. We can see our way through the wilderness. We can look up and see a brighter day. Why do you think so many African Americans have such strong prophetic? Because we're the eyes. 
That's right. And every ethnic group, every kindred tongue, people, and nation has a spot on God's body. That's why people are supposed to be exactly who they are, because there's a different function that they accomplish. Okay? Many, many uh, Hispanic people are the very heart of God. What do you mean by that? Uh, know how to rejoice regardless of circumstances. Uh, know how to keep the family together. And know how to keep the man as the head. That's at the very heart. And so what God called us to do uh, three and a half years ago now, almost three and a half years ago, was to come out of our religious-based segregation. Come out of our uh, structures, come out of our liturgies, come out of our orders of service, come out of all the religious things we have built because God has moved on. That's what he calls us out of. What did he call us into? He called us into a time and a space and a season where different members of the body of Christ would get together under obedience, under the banner of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, and allow everybody to do what they do, to do their function in the body, so that we could actually become a body again, a body united under the leadership of the head, the Lord Jesus Christ. What that means practically is that we were supposed to throw down the walls, the barriers, the segregation, and start worshiping and fellowshipping with people that are very, very different from you. And that's why a lot of religious people don't want to do it. God is calling us to unite as a body and to let everyone in the body of Christ do what they do. But that means you have to begin to fellowship and connect with people that are different from you, with Christians that are bringing a different part. For example, uh, the liver, the kidneys act like the filters. Hello, Uncle Ben. Uh, God bless you. The liver and the kidneys are the filters, the lungs, the skeletal structure, the nervous system the digestive system, okay, the circulatory system, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears of God. Each member, each ethnic group is a different part of God's body. And that means you have to begin to fellowship with and connect with people that are very, very different from you. Here's what you don't have to do. You don't have to try to be like anybody else. That's what people are always afraid of. You don't have to try to be like other people. You're supposed to be yourself. You're supposed to add what you add. But we are supposed to come together and overcome the racism, overcome the segregation, overcome the separation. Okay? Because Sunday morning is still one of the most segregated hours in uh, in all of America because we tend to want to work, worship in a homogeneous group. We tend to want to worship with people, only people that are like us. God called us out of that at the end of 2014. Because what we were supposed to have been doing by now was being an example to the world that we can all get along. We can all get along under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Not in our own strength. Not in our own merits. Not in our own ideas. But we can all get along under the banner of Christ, under his love, under his leadership and obedience to him. Do you know why? Because God knew that everything that's happening now was coming. And God wanted to raise his children up to be a light to the unbelievers, to demonstrate multicultural, multi-ethnic unity, not from the strength and the efforts of man, but through the grace and obedience to Jesus Christ. We should have been there by now. And what's been happening, you've noticed it both in the large religions and some of the large denominations. You've noticed it in your local body. You've noticed that churches are dying. Why do you think that's happening? Because if you're not going to give God any glory, why should God leave you on the earth? Why do you think so many saints are dying? Why do you think so many churches are dying on the vine? Because God called us to let that go at the end of 2014 and to form something new. It's time for something new. The Lord has moved on from all that religion and all those religious practices and all the way we do church around here. That's not where the Lord is right now. That's why so many saints are dying. That's why so many churches are dying. Because we should have been in place at the end of 2014. <clears throat> Another thing I have to say is 
one of the things that people are going to have to let go for far too long, too many Western American Christians have only honored evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But there's five. There's fivefold ministry gifts, not three. There's not just evangelists, pastors, and teachers. There's apostles and prophets, along with evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And for far too long, too many denominations, too many churches, too many people have not allowed the apostles and prophets to come in and do what we do. And one of the things that we as prophets can do is give you a spiritual locator word. We can ask the Lord, where are you now? Where is God now and where is the church now? Because that is what the Lord does in the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation. He gives grades to the churches. He lets the churches know, here's what you're doing. Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. Here's what I'm pleased with. Here's what I'm not pleased with. And then he gives each church a challenge to either continue doing the good things or to repent of the things that aren't pleasing him. And then he gives the church a promise that if you overcome... You get this reward, and then he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. So as prophets, we're able to come in and let you know we can locate where God is and where that particular church is. That's why the devil fights so hard against apostles and prophets, and that's why so many people have just accepted evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But you need to accept all five. God gave us fivefold ministry, not just the ones you want. And so we have long since been in a time where God has called people out of their prejudice, out of their racism. I'm talking about the saints, not the world. You can't expect the worldly people to follow the voice of God, but God does expect his children and his body to obey his voice. And he called a long time ago for us to get past the racism and stop thinking that you get to decide who is and is not saved and who is or is not in his kingdom. Because I stopped by to tell you that people don't have to be saved enough for you. Okay? What do you call cheese that doesn't belong to you? Not your cheese. What do you think Christianity is? Not your church. This is Jesus' church. The church is Jesus' idea. Jesus died and shed his blood. And Jesus is the head. And Jesus has been exalted and has the name that's above every name. This is not your church. You don't get to decide who's saved enough. They don't have to be saved enough for you. You don't get to decide which parts of the body are and are not necessary. No more than you would pluck off parts of your own body. And say, well, I don't need my left arm. Well, I don't need my right eye. Well, I don't need my left knee. Well, I don't need my back. Well, I don't need my hip bone. Well, I don't need my spleen. You wouldn't bit more rip off parts of your body and say you don't need it. And that's what, for far too long, many of the saints have been doing. You've been trying to kick people out of the kingdom and approve people that, that you think have to be saved enough for you. You don't get to decide who the Lord is going to use. You don't get to decide who the Lord is going to anoint. You don't get to decide what ministry, what part of the body, what other people bring. That's, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> That's the job of the head of the church. And remember, the scripture says that when we get saved, the Spirit of God distributes gifts as He will. He distributes gifts to people when they come into the kingdom of God, when they come into the body of Christ, as He wills. That means you don't get to decide who gets what. You don't get to decide whether or not prophets are real or who the prophets are. You don't get to decide if people are saved enough for you. You don't get to decide if God has decided to forgive someone and use them and they were just living in sin yesterday and God brings them in the kingdom and God decides to use them. You don't, they don't have to be saved enough for you. This is not your church. And for far too long, We've had these super religious, holier-than-thou people standing guard in front of the gates of the kingdom trying to tell other people that they weren't saved enough for them. So God doesn't have anything for you or God doesn't, is not going to use you or whatever. Or maybe you've got a past. If you've got a past, welcome to planet Earth. Human beings have past because we are born in sin. 
That is why Jesus Christ calls us out of that and into him. And when you get born again and you come into his kingdom, you are not automatically perfected. It does not work that way. It's going to take God the rest of your life and you're still not going to die perfect. Moses didn't die perfect. King David didn't die perfect. Jacob, Israel didn't die perfect. Okay? You're not going to be perfected in this life. It's a day-by-day -day walk with God. Day-by-day. Choice-by-choice. Give us this day our daily bread. Hello, Jess Naomi. Okay? And for far too long, we have, uh, we've been guilty of that, of thinking that we are judges of the grace of God. And James tells us, James, the book of James chapter 2 tells us that we don't get to decide who God's grace goes to. And that's why we have been separated. So God meant to lift us up, his body, his children up a long time ago. That means Africans of every nation. Africa is not a country. Africa is a continent. Africans of every nation. Europeans. Okay? Asians. Far East Asians. Southeast Asians. Middle Easterners. Okay? Coming together under the banner of Christ. I know some of y'all have never thought about that. You never heard that in your whole life. Because all your life you have worshipped with a homogenous group of people. People that were just like you. God called for an end to that a long time ago. Because each ethnic group, each uh, kindred tongue, people, and nation has a very particular spot on God's body. And that's the spot we're supposed to be occupying, except we're supposed to be together under the banner of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, under the headship of Jesus. So God can lift up, lift up his body as an example to the world that we can get along and we can love each other under the headship and the obedience of Jesus Christ, not in our own strength and not in our own efforts as people. So we are in a season of change and we are already f almost four, well, three years and two months into something and a lot of saints have just missed. That's why so many Christians are dying. Okay, that's why so many churches are dying in the vine. I just read a letter on Facebook the other day where a bunch of uh, uh, Gen Xers or Gen Zers or millennials are writing church letters to pastors saying, we're not going to be a part of your church anymore. We listened to everything you said and did everything you told us to do and didn't get any increase, didn't get any blessing. We just watched you get increase every year. Okay, and they're leaving the church and churches are dying. Do you know why? Because that's not where the Lord is. Okay? If no one ever explained it to you, the Spirit of God always puts His power behind the will and the purposes and the Word of God. And God releases His Word to accomplish His will and His purpose in that season and in that time. A whole lot of people fall in love with, with where the Holy Spirit was. A whole lot of people fall in love with a song that the Spirit of God anointed six years ago. <clears throat> and they've been singing that same song for six years. <clears throat> and they won't let the Holy Spirit give them, excuse me, won't let the Holy Spirit give them any new songs. They fell in love with something that God did 20 years ago. And they built a whole denomination around it. They built a whole religion around it. They built a whole church around it. God's a person, not a set of rules. He has something to say every day. He has something to say in every season. And you need to be able to discern what this Lord is saying right now. That's what prophets are for. That's what we're for. That's why God gave the gift of prophetics. So that we could understand where the Lord is right now. And not get stuck on where the Lord was or what he was doing. And so we are in a season of change. And all of the children of God that are willing to let go of your prejudice, let go of your racism, let go of your denominationalism, let go of your ideas, and let go of what you think about how church should be. Because what has happened to us is we have adopted a, a menu mentality. In, in, in uh, uh, many American churches, what has happened is we have decided that, that, that going to church is like going to a restaurant. And we're supposed to sit back and look up at the menu and say, I'll take this, 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 and I'll take that. But I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want that. 
It doesn't work that way. God's kingdom does not work that way. We don't tell God what to do. God tells us what to do. God don't follow us. We follow him. God don't bow down before us. We bow down before him. He's the head. And for far too long, we have had that menu mentality where we think we get to walk in the house of God and say, well, I don't like the way they do that music, so I'm leaving. If God has assigned you somewhere and you don't like the music, then oh well. If that's the church God told you to go to, that's where you're supposed to go. <clears throat> but we have had that menu mentality for far too long, and Christians in America have felt like we get to pick and choose. Okay? And we should have let that go at the end of 2014. If God assigned you somewhere and you don't like the music, get over yourself. It's not about you. Okay? It's about whatever thus said the Lord. And so this season, if you don't hear the voice of God and do what the Lord is telling you to do, you're going to die. And your church is going to die on the vine. Why do you think so many saints have been dying? Why do you think so many denominations are folding up? Why do you think so many churches are losing so many members? Because that's not where God is. He ain't back there in the religious practices that we thought were so important. Because as Jesus said, we take our traditions of men and make the word of God of none effect. That's not where the Lord is. Where the Lord is, he's calling for unity among his children. Uh, we use the term blacks, whites, whatever. Blacks, whites, reds, browns, Asians, African Americans. Okay, Jess. Okay, hold on. I'll deal with that in a minute. <clears throat> Every kindred tongue, people and nation. He's calling you to snap into place and do the thing that he's calling you to do, whatever that is. Okay? That's the season we're in right now. And if you don't hear the voice of God now, you're going to die. I mean you personally. I don't just mean your church. I mean, why again, why do you think so many saints are leaving? Because if the salt has lost its savor, if God is not going to get any glory out of your life, if the Lord can't use you in the way he wants to use you, why would he let you keep walking the earth? We're in that time. That's how serious this is. Why, oh, why do you think there's so much death in the streets? Why do you think the streets are running red with the blood of our children? That's the time we're in right now. Right now. That's why God makes prophets. That's why you need the prophetic, the apostolic, the evangelical, the pastoral, and the teaching or the educational. You need all five. And we as prophets can come in and tell you where the Lord is right now and get a located word. All right? Now, <clears throat> for those of you that are serious about your walk with Christ, for those of you that want to get in the will of God, for those of you that want to do what the Lord is calling you to do, I'm about to release something unto you. Okay, I'm about to release something unto you. The Spirit of God is going to release an anointing unto you. Okay? So right now, in the name of Jesus, I release unto you the anointing and the unction to come together as one. I release unto you the anointing and the unction to get past racism. We break the spirit of racism in Jesus' name. We break the spirit of prejudice in Jesus' name. We break the spirit of segregation and division. For the spirit of God, in the spirit of God, there is unity. And I release unto you the anointing for unity. I release unto you the unction for unity. I release unto you the spirit of change for us to come together as one under the banner and the lordship of Jesus Christ to do what he's calling us to do in this hour, which is let every kindred tongue, people, and nation snap into place and do what they are created by God to do so that we may become the light and the salt of the earth so that the unsaved people, the world, can see that we can get along in love under the banner of Jesus Christ. So I uh, establish that by the blood of Jesus that has paid, paid the price for all sin. I seal it with the name of Jesus, the name that is exalted above every name. And I release it unto you on my authority as a prophet in the kingdom of God upon the earth. So for those of you that have ears to hear and those of you that understand what just happened, then the Spirit of God just breathes into you that Spirit and you're going to see your life change. You're going to see your heart change. And what God is going to do now, God is going to start opening doors for multicultural fellowship. 
multi-ethnic fellowship. You're going to start meeting people from all over the world, people with different gifts than you, people that speak a different language than you, people that, God bless you, people that have different uh, perspectives than you because, for example, they might be the knee and you might be the ear. If you're the ears of God, then be the ear. Let God use you to hear. But you can't tell the knee what it's supposed to do. The knee is the knee. My elbow, my elbow joint, my elbow bends towards me this way. My knee joint, my knee joint bends back away from me. The elbow can't tell the knee that you ain't right because you don't bend the way I bend. Let the elbow be the elbow. Let the knee be the knee. Let the eyes be the eyes. Let the mouth be the mouth. That's where the Lord is right now. Okay? No more skin color divisions. No more language divisions. No more ethnic divisions. Everybody coming together. Meeting people as, again, very, very different from you. That will <clears throat> come together under the, the body of Christ and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That anointing has been released unto you. And now those of you that have ears to hear, that are hearing what the Lord is saying to you, your life is going to change. Your life, life is going to change. Pray for my, okay, remind me in a few minutes. Let me finish this message and then I'll pray. Absolutely. Okay, your life is going to change because that's where the Lord is right now. We should have been in place already. I can't stress that to you enough. But you can't go back and you can't undo and redo. So here we are right now. Uh, into 2018. So that's what it's time to do. That's the season of change that we're in. And I cannot stress to you enough that those that reject the voice of God, you're going to leave here. And those that obey the voice of God, God is going to use you to reach out to people that maybe be from, that might be from the other side of the planet. But the same Holy Ghost that's in you is going to speak to the Holy Ghost in them so that we can come together and be an example, be a light to the world, to show them what racial harmony, ethnic harmony is supposed to look like. That's where we are right now. All right? Okay, uh, somebody asked me uh, on Periscope to pray for someone named Mike. What do you want me to pray? What is their need? And then I think um, someone said that they weren't sure what God was saying because they couldn't hear his voice. So if you're still on Periscope, uh, speak up again. Let me address that. And let me pray. And uh, we'll deal with that. Okay, I don't see anything coming up. Uh, so y'all let me know. If not, I will uh, close this message out. Because uh, I do want to pray for those prayer requests. Okay, Jess, you say you're scared because you can't hear his voice. Okay, Abila, I see you. Okay? All right, Jess, um, what do you mean you can't hear the voice of God? You can't hear when the Lord's talking to you, so let me tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. The thing to do is you're going to have to cast out any blockages. You're going to have to cast out any hard of hearing. You're going to have to cast out anything out of your life that's not of God. If there's anything in your life that's not of God, ask the Holy Spirit to show you. If you are walking in anything or you ever were a part of anything that you've never confessed, you're going to have to cast it out of your life. Breathe that spirit. Okay, worry. Worry is not from God. Breathe that spirit out. Cast out the spirit of worry, doubt, unbelief. Then you're going to have to get up every day and spend time in his word. And when you get up every day and spend time in his word, when you begin to bathe your mind and your spirit, okay, okay. When you begin to bathe your mind and your word in his spirit, then you will begin to attune your spirit to his voice and you will begin to know his voice when you hear him. Hey there, blessings from Delaware, God bless you. You begin to know his voice when you hear him. You have to tune your spirit to the voice of God with the Word of God. You have to feed your spirit the written Word, and that's what tunes your spirit to help you hear the living Word. It's not going to happen any other way. Okay? You have to feed your spirit the same way you feed your body. You have to feed your spirit. Do you know how your body talks to you? When you need to go to the bathroom, your body tells you. When you have a headache, your body tells you. 
When you're hungry, your body tells you. If you have an itch, you need to scratch. Um, okay, if you've been struggling to read the word, that's demonic oppression. No Christian should struggle to read the word of God. That means the devil's trying to stop you. The devil's been oppressing you. Now, if you are not familiar with the word of God, the place to start is in 1 John. If you've never studied the word of God, the place to start is in 1 John, because that's where it talks about the, the sweet love of the Father, and that's where it talks about the love of Jesus, okay? If your eyesight is blurry, maybe you need some glasses, or maybe you just need to put your hands on your eyes and ask God to clear up your vision. But there is no way that there's not a form of the Word of God that you can read or hear. Sometimes you can listen to audio tapes, but it's feeding your spirit the Word of God that tunes it to be able to hear the Holy Spirit and be able to hear the voice of God. That's how you hear from the Lord. That's how you know. Okay, because the Spirit of God will give a witness. Okay, let me pray for Mike. I want to pray for Mike. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Mike that you would open the door to help him go to school and pay for his fees, oh God. We know that you are a God of unlimited supply. So I ask you to give him direction, oh God. Make sure that's the school you want him at and make him to know. Give him a witness in his spirit, oh God to know where you want him to be and then open the door financially so we'll have the money to go to school and pursue the education you want him to have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, pray for me. I challenge my workplace and I need God to intercede on my behalf. Okay. All right. Abila Tanimu, if I'm saying that right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come on behalf of Abila. Lord, whatever challenges they're facing in the workplace, we ask you to be with them because you said when the wicked, even our enemies and our foes, uh, came upon us to eat up our flesh, they stumble and fell. You said the Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They come out against you one way and flee from before you seven ways. You said that you are not a God that has pleasure in, wicked, in wickedness. You said that you would smite the cheekbones of our enemies and that you would break the teeth of the ungodly, O oh God. So we know that you mean for us to have victory in every situation if we hear your voice and obey. So I intercede on his behalf, O oh God, that he could hear your voice and do what you're telling him to do, whatever that is, that he might have victory in the workplace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. Do I have any other prayer requests? Let me know. Mike's son's school fees, he needs to pay. Amen. We'll expect God to lead you in that situation and open doors and give you those finances. Because when we pray, we have to believe we receive what we ask from God when we pray. All right? Any other prayer requests? All right. So, I want everybody to know that you're in a season of change. Uh, the, the Spirit of God released an, an unction and an anointing unto you to move with that change, to get into place, and to learn how to love and accept others that are different from you but have a different place in the body of Christ because that's where we are right now. No more religion, no more segregation, no more racism in the body, but love, obedience, purpose, and let every kindred tongue, people, and nation snap into place under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? All right, let me pray a closing prayer. Thank you so much for tuning in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your mighty word, O oh God. We, we thank you for those of us that are alive, for a chance to hear you and a chance to obey and a chance to line up with your purposes in this season, O oh God. So we want to be obedient, oh God. So we thank you for the release of your spirit to be able to reach out to people of all kindreds, tongues, peoples, and nations because the love of Christ should be a witness from heart to heart and the spirit of God will be a witness from spirit to spirit. So help us to snap into place wherever you called us to and help us to perform our function as the members of your body so that you might raise us up to be a light to the world so that they can see we can all get along under your lordship under your banner, under your headship, in the love, faith, and obedience of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Again, thank you for tuning in. I'll be back next week at my regular time at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll see you then.